you guys to stand and sing with us. So open up. So open up the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord? Stop the Lord Almighty. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? And the veil was torn. 
What a sacrifice was made as the heavens roared. All hail King Jesus. All hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All hail King Jesus. It's nice to have all of you with us here today. We'll take a moment to share a couple of announcements and our prayer requests. Uh, the first announcement is that we are on the cusp, that is tomorrow morning, uh, starting Vacation Bible School. Uh, the report I received on Wednesday at staff was that we have 90 kids enrolled. We have all the supplies necessary for the week, and we have all the volunteers in place needed to carry off this program. So we praise God for all of that as we pray for the blessing upon Vacation Bible School that starts on Monday this week. We also want to take a moment to encourage you if on the way in you grabbed a bulletin. This is only our second week with bulletins, so hopefully you grabbed one. Sound is a little high. I'm hearing feedback. Um, there is a, a perforation, an extended piece on the edge of your bulletin. On one side, it records your attendance. On the other side, your prayer request. Would you go ahead and fill that out? Uh, there are similar cards in the pews if you'd rather use those. Uh, but either way, fill out a card front and back. If you have prayer requests, the back, the front, your attendance for sure. And then just place it in the collection plate. We have plates, as you know, at the rear of the church right behind you. And then to the west side at that X as well, either one. Uh, if you'd like and include them in the prayers that we do have for today uh, this is the last Sunday in July so we still have a few families that we're praying for in celebration of their baptismal birthdays you can see them listed there we have a whole flurry of weddings happening some of them are relatives peers of each other that are getting married and we want to keep them all in our prayers we also want to uh, pray as I mentioned our vacation Bible school a number for healing and uh, you see on that list those that are presented there. Uh, the newest edition just yesterday, we added uh, Mike Cambiano to the list. Some of you may know him. Um, had a, uh, a uh, heart issue and ended up with a bypass down at St. Luke's on the Plaza. So we keep him in our prayers. He, I saw him yesterday. He's looking really good. Uh, for uh, Jonah's or Jonah's uh, family, 
uh, at her loss and for the peace that only God can give. And then we've got one family we're praying for. They're anticipating the birth of a child down in New Zealand, Emily and Garth, and we continue to pray for them. If you have other prayer requests, please include them on uh, the back sheet and tear it off, put it in the collection plate. Again, we'd like to welcome you to the congregation, to the celebration, and invite you now to stand as we begin our service. We begin in the name of the Father who created us. In the name of his Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that gave his life and redeemed us. In the name of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the presence of God, the power of God, the guarantee of God within each of our hearts. In the name of that one true and living Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we begin. And all God's people said, let's pray. Merciful and gracious Father, we come into your presence today. For you've invited us when we are tired and weak and heavy laden that you will provide the rest and the strength and the comfort and the power that we need to live a life worthy of the gospel. We need in this moment grace and mercy. We need your forgiveness for we have fallen short of your glory. We need to experience your love that's expressed to us through your son Jesus Christ. We need, Lord, your promises. Give us ears to hear them, hearts to believe them, and throats that will confess our conviction that you are our Lord and Savior. Forgive us, renew us, strengthen us in the one true faith. And all God's people said, amen. Upon this, our prayer of confession as a called and ordained servant of the word, pastor. It's a privilege to share with you that God loves you so much that he sent his son. Jesus loves you so much that he gave his life. And by his death and resurrection has freed each and every one of us from our sins. We are forgiven. Forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Please be seated as we continue our service. Our message. Paul writes, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is more, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Now we sing. You are God in heaven. And I am here on earth So I'll let my words be few Oh Jesus, I am so Sing the 
the simplest of all love songs. The simplest of all love songs. I want to bring to you. So So I'll stay in all of you. So I'll stay in all of you. Oh, when I love you. Jesus, I am so in love with you. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 6. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them walking on the lake. He was about to pass by, he was about to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out, because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately, he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gensenarat and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns, or countryside. They placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch him, even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched him were healed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Father, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. One would expect at this point I'd be asking you to shut down, power down your cell phones, but what I'd like you to do is, is at least estimate without looking at your cell phone, if you've got it on you, at what level power you're at right now. Would you say that uh, it is fully charged? Uh, Three-quarters of the way charged. Uh, are you just barely hanging on and getting those messages that your battery is low? We live in a very plug-and-play environment these days where so much of what we own and what we experience is somehow connected to a cord every once in a while. Whether it's a laptop or a device or a, a phone or or maybe a car. I don't know if you've heard the latest on the, uh, is it called the, the Volts of Chevy? Their electric car that's blowing up and they're advising you not to park it in your garage today? Uh, 
And we probably have had experience with cell phones that have overheated on us, and we wondered if that was okay. In fact, I think there was a while a prohibition on traveling on airplanes with certain phones because of uh, their overheating and the damage they could do. But despite that, we continue to buy the technology, and we're still very much a plug-and-play society. In fact, my dog is a plug-and-play dog. She likes to go out about 3 o'clock in the morning, and she's a real dark gray color, and so she goes out there. I lose her in the backyard, and she has discovered that a four-foot fence means jump, and so she just, just jumps over the fence. So I had to go get her one of those glow-in-the-dark collars that literally plugs in and so I turn it on before she goes out the back door, and I can see the red flashing dog going from place to place, and at least I can track her. That's the plug-and-play world in which we all live today. Even, I think the word is Mario. I, didn't, I pronounced it the way an Oki would pronounce it earlier, and I was corrected. Benefits from powering up often in the scheme of a, of, a, of a game, powering up. <coughs> Paul's prayer. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he, God, may strengthen you with power through his spirit. He'll use that word three times in our text. In fact, he'll use that word, power, three times. He'll use the word love three times as well. The words intricately connected in Paul's thinking and in Paul's prayer for the Christians in Ephesus and for us today. I pray that of his glorious riches, riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit. Now, there's all kinds of power out there. And we think of nuclear, of course. There's political power. There's physical power. Psychological power relational economic power and what Paul is praying for for us and for the Christians of his day spiritual power power that addresses where weakness really is experienced in our inner being powering up there and when Paul is thinking he's thinking about our spirit and our soul Maybe you can go a week with your cell phone before you plug it in. I'm going to guess most of you can't. Two or three days, maybe, before you're plugging in. Roxanne going, are you kidding? What? Daily, Daily plugging in? Okay. <laughs> maybe time for a new one. God constructed us in a way in which he articulated very clearly that our battery life is not much more than a week. And within the course of the week, we have to plug back in. The commandment, the third. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Because he understands the drain in our life and the constant demand for energy and that there is a lifespan of not only the batteries in our cars or the batteries on our phone, but the batteries in our inner being. And there comes a point where we've got to plug back in and power up. So that Christ, Paul writes, may dwell in your heart through faith. That's the objective of powering up. He has at least four petitions in this prayer. Four different types of prayer I would suggest you need to include every day in your devotion life. A prayer for strength, a prayer for love, a prayer for knowledge. And then there is another that I think is a, an incredible way that Paul encourages us to pray. And I want to hold that one and you in a little bit of suspense for a moment. But let's look at the first petition. Paul's prayer to the Ephesian Christians for strength. May God strengthen you with power through his spirit. Through his spirit strength it's a strength to stand firm when the world would push us over it's a strength to be courageous when things would threaten us 
It is a strength that comes from inside, which is a gift from God in what he's praying for. It's the strength to resist the devil, all of his works and all of his ways, and to fight the good fight of faith. It is a strength that though outwardly we may be wasting away and we may realize that we're pretty close to the end of the life on our cell phone, our inner being, yet inwardly we are being renewed daily. Paul prays for strength for his congregation in Ephesus. And I would encourage that that ought to be a petition every day of our life. Lord, give me the strength. Power me up so that I can resist the devil and all of his works. Strengthen me so that I can run the race with perseverance set before me. Give me your strength. By the power of your spirit, your strength. And with that, the confidence to know that whatever I face this week, I can do everything through him who gives me that strength, Paul writes in Philippians. Pray for strength. Power up. His second petition, love. It's the word he uses as much as power in our text for today. Because you see, you can have all the strength in the world. You can move mountains, he writes in Corinthians, but if you have not love, you have nothing. In fact, he says, if you have all the strength in the world, but you have not love, you're a gong or a cymbal. You're just a noisemaker is all you are. So you cannot pray for strength and not pray also for love. The gift of compassion that allows you to understand the heights and the depths, the breadths and the lengths of God's limitless love for us in Jesus Christ. Lord, let me experience the outer edges of your love so that I might love as you have loved me. Let me be, Lord, a person of compassion and care that reflects the compassion and care that you demonstrate to me and lavish upon me daily. Let me experience the heights of that and how far down that love goes and how far wide that love stretches so that I might, when challenged, love that much those that I find in my life difficult to love. God puts those people in our lives. Theologians define them by an abbreviation, EGRs, and we all have them by name, EGRs, extra grace required, or extra love required if you want, and you know them by name in your life. They may be in your household, they may be in your neighborhood, they may be at your place of employment, they may be fellow students at school. But God puts them there with the challenge that we ask him to fill us, to power us up with love so that we can love even them as you have loved even us. In your prayers, pray daily for strength. Plug in daily to this love. And his third petition, knowledge. May God give you the ability to know this love that surpasses all human understanding. This is going beyond some simple intellectual understanding. It's not shelving your catechism and your Sunday school experience. It's growing beyond it toward the true knowledge that surpasses all human comprehension. It's asking God to immerse you in his wisdom. Lord, let me see the world the way you see it. Let me see everything I experience through your lenses and not mine. Let me have a discernment and understanding that far surpasses anything that's expressed around me. Power me up so that I can stake my stand with your strength. Love as you have loved me and understand with a degree of wisdom that only comes from you. You know that scripture time and time again invites us to grow in these areas. To grow in the grace of God. To grow in the knowledge of our Lord. And Paul demonstrates in our text how that begins. By folding your hands and bowing your heads and asking your Lord, power me up. Power me up with strength and with love 
and with wisdom. So you get down to that moment on your cell phone where it says you're about to lose the charge. So do you go take it and sit it on a desk and assume even though it's 15 foot away from an electrical cord or you're recharging unit that it'll just charge itself? It doesn't work that way, does it? You have got to connect that directly to the source of power in your life. <laughs> I used to walk through uh, airports and you always saw people gathered, but at one point they always gathered around the liquor so much. That's kind of where the groups hung out. But I've noticed a change, not that people aren't still there, but there are new gatherings taking place. And it usually is always connected to a plug-in somewhere. And people are trying to get a charge before they jump on the plane. And a little frustrated when someone is hogging all the currency, right? The Lord invites us at least once a week into his presence to plug into his grace into the strength and into the love and into the knowledge that only he can provide and it can't be found anywhere else jesus invites us into his presence he says you who are weak and heavy laden i mean you're down to zero on the power level come into my presence and i will give you more than rest i'll give you at least these four things paul is referring to here strength love knowledge wisdom and beyond our wildest imagination and this is the petition i find so exciting in our text paul writes may you be filled with the full measure of god it is lord fill me up to, no not here uh, not here lord fill me up to here i mean go ahead fill me as far as you can fill me Beyond my wildest imagination, Lord, plug me into the power and resources that are yours to give freely through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do something with me I would never have imagined to ask for. I would never have thought to pray for. Lord, do that thing, whatever that thing is. His indwelling presence, gifted you by the power of your baptism, comes with an indwelling power as well. It's like having a cell phone without a battery. And God deposits the battery in our hearts in the waters of baptism and he invites us to plug in. And the only limit, the only limit to what God will do in your life is their capacity to contain what he can provide. <laughs> there are times I plug in and forget and it could be setting on the charger for hours. It never gives me more than it can contain, but it will give me up to that limit. Pray today. Pray for strength. You're gonna need it. Pray for love. You're gonna use it. Pray for wisdom. You'll find it incredible value. And then take a risk this week and fold your hands and bow your heads and say, Lord, do something with me I could never have imagined. Fill me with the goodness of your grace in measures beyond my wildest imagination and do it to the brim. Fill me to capacity, Lord. Paul's prayer is that the Lord fill us to that point where there is no more God can shove in us. Pray that of the Lord and by the power of his spirit. There is power, saving power, in the name that is above every other name. There's power in the gospel. For according to Paul, it is the salvation of everyone who believes, Jew or Gentile. There's power in the resurrection as there is power in the gift that you received at your baptism. And Paul says, pray. Pray for each other, but pray for yourself. Pray that God powers you up, charges you with strength, powers you with love, fills you to capacity with wisdom and knowledge, and then do something 
you could never have imagined God would dream of doing with you. Your power is in God's hands. And his power is made perfect when your battery is getting drained. And all God's people said, Amen. And may the peace that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in faith in that power into life everlasting. Amen. We're going to continue to receive our gifts to the Lord. And as we do that, you're going to see a number of ways that you can give electronically. We've been doing that since, what, March now? So we probably have that down well. But if you are an offering envelope collection person, then there are collection plates back in the narthex directly behind you and west over here at the uh, west entrance. And if you will now, if you haven't already, fill out the card. Your attendance on one side, your prayers on the other. Tear it off drop it in the plate as well at the end of the service. Thank you. God bless. Don't kneel me down again Here at your feet Show me how much you love you
join our hearts in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the power of your love and your love to call us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And, and you do that through the gift of baptism. We rejoice with those today who remember and recognize the day which you have adopted them into your kingdom of light. We ask that you continue to build them up and by your spirit lead them to a greater knowledge and relationship with you. And Father, we also thank you for the gift of your amazing love for us. But we also thank you for the gift of marriage, where you call us into vocations to share that love that you have given us with that special someone in our lives. And today we, we ask that you uplift the marriages of Holly and Isaac, Lane and Lauren, and Paige and Mark, and lead them again by your spirit and by your power <coughs> to be reflections of that great love that you have given us through Jesus. Dear Lord, we also ask that you empower us as a church here at Bethany in all the different ministries that we're involved in. But especially at this time, we lift up our Vacation Bible School. We pray for the, the kids who are coming, the, the volunteers who are serving, the, the parents of those kids, the, the band and the, the church staff here. And we ask that this Vacation Bible School be fruitful and that those who do not yet know that amazing love that you have for them, that they may come to know you this week here at Bethany. And Lord, we also have people on our hearts and our minds in need of your healing. And today we, we lift up Jean, Anita, John, Bill, Blake, Carrie, Addie, and Mike. Strengthen them, Lord, and we ask that if it is your will that they receive that healing that, that only comes from you. God, you're, you're a God of, of power, and you're also a God of peace. And today we ask that you pour out your peace upon John and Sue's family as you have called her to her heavenly home with you this week. Allow the family to cling to you and be uplifted by the power of your resurrection from the dead and, and your promise of eternal life to all who believe in you. And dear Heavenly Father, we also rejoice today we rejoice with Emily and Garth and as they're expecting a baby soon. We ask that you uh, bless the doctors and nurses that are working with them. And Lord, we ask that you continue to prepare Emily and Garth to be parents and allow them to reflect that, that love, that great love that you have given us through Jesus. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask all of this in your son's holy and precious name. And we now pray the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, Bethany, I ask you to rise and hear the blessing of our Lord to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with a great big smile on his face and give you his peace. Amen. Oh 
caused your sun to shine on darkest nights. And for all, oh, for all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be our anthem song. Jesus, we love you. And oh, Jesus, we love you. In all how we love you. And you are the one our hearts adore. Amen. Have a blessed week. Hope to see you guys next week.